Hi, my name is Carrie Barnum. I am the marketing director for New Shelves Books. I am filling in for Amy Collins today in Free Advice Friday. Amy's spending some time with family in Vermont, so it's always a pleasure when I get to fill in for. Um, again, if you have any questions, put them in the chat box or the Q&A box. We'll answer those, and I'll be going through some emails that we got uh, over the week. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi, Cheryl. I'm so glad you could join us, even if it is afternoon your time, or maybe that works better for you. Let's see. You're wondering about traditional publish publishing versus hybrid or co-publishing. I've seen a few publishers offering these hybrid co-publishing options where they charge the author money. Is this legit? A new trend? Something to avoid? A true publisher is never going to ask you for money. A true publisher also often called the traditional publisher, pays you money. They pay you royalties for your work and for access to your work. Now, there are small publishers. This is not a hybrid. This is not someone who asks you for money. But there are small publishers who aren't HarperCollins, who aren't Penguin, that don't have huge houses. But again, they are not asking you for money to publish your book. These hybrid presses, or vanity presses as we often call them, are, I mean, they're pay to play. And the problem with this is that you pay them to publish your book, and usually it's a hefty amount, and you're paying them this money, but then you don't, re you don't retain the control. It's not your purchased ISBN, you don't have distribution rights. So you lose a lot and you're still paying the money out. And that's why when people say that they're considering hybrid publishing, we very often ask if they are willing to put in the work to do self-publishing. Because with self-publishing, yes, you are paying to publish your own book. But it's your book. You have full control. It's your ISBN. You own the rights. You get full royalty and you're not paying anybody else out for it. You get to decide the pricing all of these things and that's why hybrid publishers are not my favorite now if you are a 90 year old woman who's written a memoir and she you just want to get your book out you want your grandkids to be able to order that book you don't care about selling it and if you have to pay some money to get it out there it's cool with you that's when a hybrid publisher might be the answer but overall i think that you either go with a traditional publisher whether it be big or small or you self-publish. It's very, very rare that I would actually recommend someone go to a hybrid or vanity press. Hi, Stephen. It's nice to see you again. Say, how can we as authors and speakers be the authority on different topics that we write about? For example, finances versus self-improvement versus freedom and liberty. Here's the thing. The best way to become an authority on any topic is to research it, share about it, and actively get into the discussion. Amy got into publishing as an authority in publishing because she reads everything. She subscribed to 20 newsletters that, that come in and she reads them and she filters through and then she puts everything into practice. So if you want to become an authority in any topic, it's really important that you make yourself an authority. Certainly there are some things where you need a degree or a degree sure helps, um, but it's mostly important that you are actively searching out information all the time that you're staying up to date and that you're putting these things into practice and that you are sharing them. If you've got all this great knowledge up here in your head, but you don't ever share it, no one knows. You kind of have to tell people you're an authority and then back it up by sharing things, by sharing proof that you know what you're talking about. All right, and Cheryl says, I thought, have heard that self-publishing was a bit looked down upon. My cousin actually owns a children's bookstore and said that she does not accept any self-published books. Any thoughts or suggestions in going through traditional publishers versus self-publishing? Self-publishing often gets a poor name. However, if you do self-publishing right, people can't tell unless they really look and research the imprint. If you have a beautiful book that is professionally done, professionally edited, and professionally put out and available through wholesalers, through the professional channels, people don't know. And many bookstores 
do carry them. Now, if you bring in a book that looks like it's got your granddaughter's artwork on it, it's got mistakes, it's not um, clean, and it's not up to date and standards in the interior, and you say, hey, I self-published this book, will you carry it? Chances are they're going to say no, because unfortunately, while publishing and self-publishing has become easy or easier and more mainstream, which is great for so many people, it also allows people to put out shoddy work. So there are so many people who will put out a book that's not proofread, that's not edited, and that is where self-publishing gets a bad name. Most often when you're working with bookstores and libraries, if you can show that you've had consistent sales, if you've had big sales, if you have big reviews from let's say Kirkus or Library Journal, that gives your book credibility. So you can absolutely self-publish and get into bookstores and libraries, but you must do it well. Certainly traditional publishing, it's got its perks. When you do traditional publishing, you have a whole team working for you. You have people advertising and marketing for you, although not as much as you might think. Many traditionally published authors still have to market. Um, but so yes, traditional publishing does have its perks. You do lose some control, but overall you have a team supporting you. Self-publishers, you can still make it, guys. Indie authors can make it if you avail yourself of the tools and you publish well. What are some ways to build an email list? Um, a couple of ways to build an email list are to do a blog tour that offers a giveaway, and that giveaway collects email addresses and offers to let people um, sign up for your email uh, mm your newsletter. Sorry, bumbled on that one. But um, I just did a blog tour for a client of mine, Ed Torba. He's got a book out called Nat Monroe and the Haunted House. We did a blog tour that was fantastic. There was a giveaway and over 150 people not only signed up for the giveaway, but actually asked to be put onto Ed's newsletter. Right there, that's 150 people that he can tell all his news to. He can talk about book three to. So that's a great way to build. Also, on your website, you should always have an option to join the newsletter. And you need to offer them something. Don't just ask for their email. Offer them something. Are you going to offer them a free webinar? Are you going to offer them a free worksheet download, a free book? Offer people something to incentivize them. Um, Another thing, and because I actually, shameless plug, and it's probably backwards, whoop, here is Amy Collins, Daniel Halls, and John Rhodes' new book, The Best-Selling Author. And guys, this book is chock full of ideas on how to build your platform, that's your email list, that's your social media. It is all of the things that you need to know about building your lists up and getting the word out there, expanding your reach beyond book sales, and building a community of people that you can reach out to with every successive book. And so this book right here, it is on Amazon, on Kindle, so make sure you go check it out. Go read it and, you know, let us know what you think. Leave a review. Um, but you can see I've obviously got tabs and tabs going. And I have actually, I've seen this book in the process as it was being made, but I just got my first paperback copy and it's just full of great information. It is pretty much like having a consulting session with Amy, Daniel, and John and our team to figure out how to get your platform off the ground. So if you haven't grabbed this yet, go grab it and then let us know what you think about it. Like I said, shameless plug. All right. Um, so there we go. And Stephen, if our book course program are not ready, would you have any suggestions on pre-marketing a book or course to actually get sales. I would like to pre-market a course as a webinar, but I have no list. Would you have any suggestions? I would say that if you have a course or you have a webinar, but you don't have a list to market to, go find a newsletter, go find an author, go find someone to partner with that does have a list. Offer them value. So if you, I know you write um, college finance and um, ways to pay off college without going into debt, Stephen. So maybe you go to a local college and you offer them this webinar. Um, if you're asking for a paid webinar, it might be a little bit harder, but I think it's certainly something that there's value. You may have to pay up front um, for a fee to get into their um, newsletter. You may have to um, 
work out some type of deal or affiliate link with them, but that's a good way to get the word out there to people not on your list outside of your sphere. However, if your course is not ready, you better be darn sure that if you make deals and that if you are going after an audience and someone's putting your name on their newsletter and they are you know, pushing you out into the world, you must make sure that you will have that webinar or that course ready when you promise or else not only will you make yourself look bad, you're going to make that, um, that library, that college look bad. And that is something that's very hard to recover from. I'm going to go to the chat box so I don't lose the questions over here. Hi, Denise. It's great to see you. If we upload an ebook on KDP and draft a digital, should we also do it on Ingram Spark? Generally, no. What we do is we do KDP for Kindle and Amazon, and then we use draft to digital to get everywhere else. Ingram Spark will get you into some of the same places as draft to digital, but draft to digital's reach is further. Additionally, it's easier to use. Um, you can use them all in concert, but I try to simpl simplify personally. Completely up to you. And your second question, when does the bookstore special start up again as my newest novel is now live? Uh, we do have a bookstore mailing going out, um, I believe it's late January, early February. I believe that one may have sold out, but if you're not on our newsletter yet, make sure you sign up. We always tell our newsletter and our contacts there first that, um, the that something is live or if there's a deal so make sure you sign up for that and we generally do those at least quarterly so if you miss the february january february mailing we'll have another one um in may i believe so for sure and congratulations on getting your new novel live okay and linda is asking what did he offer them uh, I'm not sure exactly what that question is for. What, oh, what did um, Ed and his giveaway offer them? This giveaway, it was a blog tour. And in that blog tour, he had a couple of prizes. One was a um, $25 Amazon gift card with a signed copy of his book. And it's he's a dentist and his book kind of has some of those things in there. So there's a little dentist package that we mailed out. Um, and that was the grand prize. And then for runners up, we did signed copies of his first book and his second book. And we mailed those out as well. So um, yes, it cost him a little bit of money. Not much though. And it really made a hit with the... Um, with the blog tour in general, there's a lot more interaction when you offer a giveaway and he got to send copies of his book. So that's always great to get your book out there a little bit more. Is the best-selling author available on audiobook? April, not yet. Um, I think they're probably going to move that way, but we haven't gotten there yet. The book just came out. Um, but for sure, check up on that. I'm sure if you're on Amy's um, newsletter list that she'll send that out as soon as it is available. But in the meantime, it's available in Kindle and paperback. And it's really affordable um, for both. I believe it's $14 for the paperback and Currently, there it's as low as $1.99 for the Kindle or ebook. All right, so not with Amazon, but following steps of editing, then obtaining ISBN Library of Congress. Yes, Cheryl, if we're talking about self publishing, you want to get up on Amazon, you want to go to KP, KDP. Absolutely. But your book does need professional things um, like a Library of Congress number, or if you aren't eligible because you don't have enough authors um, or books in your imprint, you would go with a PCIP block. We get ours from the Donahue Group. Um, obtaining your own ISBN, making sure that you've been edited, making sure that you've proofread, making sure that you have a professional cover. I don't know if you've been on Amazon lately, but if you scroll through books, well, I know I can. I know not everybody can, but if I'm looking at books on Amazon, I can usually pick out the home created covers, the self published covers, and the professional covers. It's important that you find someone that knows not only graphic design, not just art, 
but book cover design. It's so important that you stay on trend with the book covers that are coming up now and making sure that you're really creating a book cover that looks like a book cover. It's very hard if you're not in that field to do that. Even if you're great with graphic art, if you're an artist even, it's not the same thing. And I promise you that professionals in the industry can tell the difference. Um, I probably talk about it too much at home because my husband will even look at a book over my shoulder and go, oh yeah, that one's, that one's not good, is it? Um, so it's definitely something your cover is so important. Um, oh, Stephen, the book that I showed, again, the best-selling author, uh, the co-authors are actually the bestseller builders co-founders so it's amy collins that we all know and love daniel hall of real fast marketing programs and um john rhodes and john is just amazing with strategy marketing and business and it is just chock full of i mean it's fun it's witty it's easy to read it's got some great little graphics and stuff in there hold it up so you can see it um and it's got 19 steps guys 19 steps to building a platform not all of them will be great for everybody some of them you're going to be going yes yeah, not for me and that's fine but out of 19 steps i'm willing to bet you can find at least five to start implementing and building your own platform so very important best-selling author all right and Cheryl, I just want to clarify, when you're talking about reputable, well-done self-publishing, you're not talking about self-publishing with Amazon or Barnes & Noble, for example, rather following steps of editing than obtaining ISBN, Library of Congress. Here's the thing, Cheryl, you don't publish with Amazon. You don't publish with Barnes & Noble. So I'm going to go back. You can publish with Amazon because they do have a number of imprints. I believe it's 16 imprints at the moment. So you can actually publish with Amazon, and they are a traditional publisher. They have one of the largest and fastest growing imprints out there, actually. But putting your book up on KDP does not mean you publish with KDP. You published your book, and you put it up on KDP, which is a platform to sell your book. When I say reputable and well done self-publishing, that means that the core of what it is, your book, I'm going to pull it up here again, it has a nice cover. It's edited inside. Publishing is the act of getting your book all together and then putting it up appropriate. It's important that when you put a book up that you are putting it up on Ingram Spark, that you have the full market discount. That means, guys, that on Ingram Spark, your discount is set at 55%. A lot of people go, wow, how can I sell a book at 55%? The thing is, is that by the time Ingram Spark and Ingram take their cut, it's only going to be a 40% discount to bookstores. And bookstores have to buy that book, pay their overhead, pay their employees, and still make a profit. So your royalty on an Ingram book that is going to retailers like bookstores or gift shops, Barnes and Noble, you're only going to make about a dollar if you use print on demand. That's standard, that's normal, and that's okay because they are marketing it for you. They're spreading your name. Every time your book is on a shelf, it's an opportunity for new readers to find you. And of course you want to upload to KDP for Amazon sales because you make more on royalties if you upload direct to KDP. And also Amazon sells approximately just under half of all the books in the US. So it's a great platform. You want to sell your books on Amazon, but you don't want to sell them only on Amazon. And to sell them elsewhere, to sell them into libraries and bookstores, you must have a well done book. That's making sure that your book is up to the standards, making sure that your layout is correct. Um, I actually think it's so important. I just saw a book not too long ago. Cover was beautiful. It was proofread. It was edited. You know what? Didn't have a professional layout. Uh, page numbers were not where they were supposed to be. The lines were not justified. Um, there were not, the footnotes weren't how they were supposed to be, and that kills a book. You bring that into a bookstore, and a, a bookstore owner flips through that and sees it, they're immediately going to say, no, thank you, and they will not give you a second chance. So it's important that you pay attention to all of the details that the publishing industry expects to find in a book. And we've got a question. Do you need a separate ISBN on your print ebook and audiobook? Yes, you do. Every format of your book should have its own ISBN. Print, 
ebook, audiobook, hardcover. That's all separate ISBNs. What you don't need is multiple ISBNs for the same format. For example, if you have your book on Amazon through Kindle and you have an ISBN for your ebook, it can go up on Kindle. If you have the same ebook, the same ISBN, it can go up on Barnes and Noble, on Draft to Digital, on Ingram Spark. Your ISBN works for that format across the board. Don't let them confuse you into taking their free ISBN or purchasing multiple ISBNs. You don't need them. What are some ways to be profitable and fast? Best way to be profitable and fast is work harder. Um, no, really, I think fast money, it's work. It's really just work. If you have a great product and you put it out there, absolutely. But a lot of times you have to build that platform. You have to have the reach. So when you have a great idea, you have a great book, it goes out there. What most people don't realize is for authors, if you are a fiction author, you rarely will make a lot of profit in the first book or even the second book. It's generally the third book when an author becomes more well-known and starts making more royalties and more profit. If you are a nonfiction author, it is very rare that you will make a huge profit on book royalties. What you generally will earn profit on is using that book as a business card, leveraging that you know what you're talking about, and then going to speak and getting paid to speak, um, selling other products that are related to your book. It's really becoming a full package. If all you have is a book and it just sits there, you're not going to do much with it. You really have to push it. You have to build your brand and build your platform. I am a pediatric physical therapist and have written a guide for parents in English and Spanish. I live between America and Spain, but I'm wondering if the building or the bilingual format would be more valued in Spain and I should seek a Spanish publisher or American publisher or self-publish. Any advice? I think you could go with either. I think you could query with Spanish publishers. You could uh, query with American publishers and you can certainly, once you publish, you can go and look into foreign rights agreements as well. Um, so there are a lot of options. Bilingual is very big in America. We have a big bilingual community and more and more there are so many libraries especially and you have a nonfiction book that I think would be appealing to libraries. Libraries love to serve their community and they know that they need to bring in more bilingual books. So I think that's super important. Um, and maybe you do bilingual, but maybe you do something all in English and then you have another book all in Spanish. Um, it's certainly something to look at and you can self-publish. I don't know you, you, your situation and how much work you're willing to put in to the publishing aspect. So it's really hard to say which one you should go with. I think you have to research your options and then query around and see what options are out there for you specifically and which ones sound the most appealing to you. Do you have any recommendations to have marketing be self-sustaining? For example, marketing budget from sales and then growing from there and expand. Um, if you are, a lot of people, what they do with their marketing budget is they usually at least the first year, they're taking profits from their book and they're dumping it back into marketing. Um, it's really hard to say as far as self-sustaining because you want to make sure that you're earning profit back on your marketing efforts, but you probably won't see that profit right away. You really have to set your own budget, what you're willing to give away in time and money and when you need to stop. Um, there are things that you can do very inexpensively to market your book, but they take your time. So do you have time or do you have money? And if you don't have either, I'm afraid that self-publishing is probably not a really good option for you. It's tired. It's time to hire someone out or um, start querying for traditional publishers, I would say. All right. I have heard that if I have a digital book on Amazon and I want to drop the price on the book to zero for a few days as a promo, I must have the book somewhere else like iBooks and drop the price there first before Amazon will allow me to drop my book to zero. Is this still true or will Amazon allow me to drop? Um, so <laughs> 
Amazon changes what they do like every day, maybe every hour. It used to be that was true that they would match a price elsewhere and they would match it for a certain amount of time. However, I've had people tell me that Amazon did not do that. I think sometimes it depends on the customer rep that you have. Um, if you're in KDP Select, you can do free days. Um, there are KDP giveaways, although I think that is changing as far as how the giveaways work. Um, but dropping down to zero, the most likely way for it to work is to drop it down somewhere else and then ask Amazon to match it. Um, they don't want people going to other websites, so they tend to do that, but not always. It's a little bit of hit or miss, so if you're planning it, um, be sure that you don't mark it too much that it will be available on Amazon for free before you give it a go. Let's see, I'm will, oh, so Cheryl's saying, I'm willing to do work, but the format, I think, will be really difficult for me to do on my own between English text, Spanish text, and drawings. Is that another subject that I'd want to go to another professional to format? that layout or do you have other recommendations also would a library ever help me to publish the book somehow libraries are not for profit they do not do publishing um, so that's probably not your best bet as far as formatting we always use a professional formatter um, we don't format our, our own books in-house um, while we may be able to do it it's not something that would be um, time or cost effective. There are so many great for formatters out there that will format. Generally, you expect to pay somewhere around $2 per page for formatting, but they're professional, they get it done, they get all the specs right for you. Um, so we tend to go to a professional formatter. Linda's asking, how do you find and contact radio programs for interviews? Well, you can go the old fashioned way and find a radio program, look them up, and then just pitch them, find their email, find their, generally phone's not the best way anymore, but their email's a great way um, to email and query and say, hey, I'd love to be on your show. I have this to offer, whether it be expertise in something, or um, you know a specific topic that's hot, you have to tell them why, not just I wanna be interviewed, but I have this to offer your program and your listeners. Um, there are also some uh, programs out there where you can sign up and you get a profile and they pitch you. I don't know the cost of those, I've never done them personally, but I have heard about them, so that's an option to look at too if you really wanna get into radio. All right, guys, I'm going to hop over to email for just a minute so that we can check and see what is happening there and what people are asking. And of course, keep putting your questions in the Q&A in the chat box and we will get to those as soon as possible. Let's see. All right. Well, I had my emails all nicely lined up and then I lost them. Fail. All right. Here we go. All right. Wendy says, I'm a little confused about revised and second editions. I am not revising 40% of the content and I'm not adding 20% more content. I will be getting a new ISBN with a 2020 copyright due to for reformatting the size to a five and a half by eight and a half. So I'm assuming I wouldn't advertise it as revised or a second edition. Not quite right there, Wendy. It's not a revised edition. It is a second edition. If it's got a new ISBN, it's a new edition. It's not revised, though, because you don't have new content and you are not changing at least 40% of the content. So it is a second edition. It's not a revised edition. Then uh, Wendy asks, on the copyright page, I would list 2016, original with Amazon ISBN and 2019 with my own ISBN, 2020 with new ISBN for new format. Is that right? No. So on your copyright page, you put only the most updated information. You don't need copyrights going all the way back to 2016. Just put the most current information, which would be 2020 copyright and your new ISBN. There's no need to list all of your old ISBNs. Um, the only concession I would say to that is that if you are republishing your book and you have a new title, but it's the same book, you would say previously published as um, 
girl who loved to read with ISBN, blah, blah, blah. Um, that way people know what they're getting. They're not repurchasing a book thinking it's a new book, but you don't need all of your old copyright and ISBN information. You just need the current information. And yeah, Cheryl is asking, how do I find a professional formatter by looking at other books? Exactly correct. If you are in writing groups, if you're in book groups and you know someone who self-published and you think their formatter did a great job, ask them who it is. You can also look on places like Fiverr. You can look inside books and see if they have any information there. Um, a lot of them will say interior design by, and that is the formatter. Um, you can also ask around if you have other people who are publishing. Uh, see, most uh, formatters will actually send you sample pages. They'll say, well, I did this book. You can go check it out. Or um, if you contact them about formatting your book, they'll take the first chapter or something along those lines and do a rough format so you can have an idea of what it will look like when they're done. All right, another question over here. All right, I have a short story that I wish to give away to build my email list. Smart, love it. I do not want someone to steal the story or rewrite some of it and remake it as their own since there are programs out there where people can unlock PDF files to manipulate the text. Am I protected? I do have a copyright page in the front of the short story. And if I also put a watermark behind the text contents, like not for resale before making a PDF, am I protected? Do you have any suggestions for another watermark statement for my story or future ones? What do you suggest to do to protect free cheat sheets, lists, and other tidbit documents for email lists? Or I have plenty of ISBNs. Would I be better off as sending an ISBN to short stories and registering it then with Bowker? So Terry, the question here, wow, multifaceted. Should you put an ISBN to your short story? Completely up to you. If you ever want to put it out, um, in a published, in a real setting, if you ever want to sell it, absolutely. You don't have to, but if you have the ISBNs, it's not a bad idea. As far as being protected, copyright page is a good way to go. Um, watermark, absolutely recommended. I would also recommend that when you're delivering um, the short story that you don't just email it to people. I would recommend that you get a program like Book Funnel. You have the PDF and you have that PDF made into an ebook for EPUB and Mobi, and then put it up on BookFunnel so that when people sign up, they're actually emailed the link to go straight to BookFunnel, and then they can go download the book. That way, not only is it watermarked, it's protected, you have their email address, everything's kind of in agreement there. There are still people out there who could break it down, who could take it, who could steal the story. That unfortunately happens. The only recourse you have at that point is to actually go and um, take legal action. But that's with any book. I think that if you are going to do an ISBN, if you are taking the PDF and you're watermarking it and also doing an ebook and a Mobi and putting it up on Book Funnel, you've done all you can reasonably do to protect yourself. And uh, people out there will be crazy, but you've done what you can to protect yourself. And certainly I think that's a great idea. All right. When sending proposal and sample chapters to traditional publishers, should I have ISBN for book already? I've seen several ask to send entire transcript, transcript right from the start, which makes me a bit nervous. Um, so if you're going to traditional publishers, you should have a copyright page. You don't need an ISBN. If you're going to a traditional publisher and querying, then they would assign an ISBN when they publish the book. But you should absolutely have a copyright in place. Um, having sometimes, depending on the publisher, depending on your work, when you query, they may ask for just a sample, like the first page, the first chapter, and then if they like it, they will ask for the entire the entire PDF watermark it for sure and do a copyright. Um, can people steal it? Same thing as I just told Terry. People can do just about anything, but traditional publishers, especially if they're big publishing houses, have a reputation to protect. And I'm, you know, they're not trying to put that on the line. So I wouldn't be too nervous about that as long as you're going through correct channels, which is going directly through them. Um, if someone, um, <laughs> kind of like, you know, those emails we used to get back in the day where it says, um, 
a, a African princess is asking for money, it's probably not the best idea to send them money. Same thing for your book transcript. If someone randomly emails you and say, hey, uh, do you have a book? I want your whole entire PDF. Probably not the smartest. Um, but you sound super smart, Cheryl. So I'm sure that you will be able to pick that out um, and not be taken advantage of there. And Wendy says, do I advertise it as a second edition? If so, how? Where does it go on the copyright page? At the top under the copyright date? Yes, your second edition generally goes right above your ISBN block. So it'd say um, your copyright information is at the top. It would say second edition, and then it would say ISBN or paperback ISBN listed out, ebook ISBN listed out, hardcover ISBN listed out. That way you can use your copyright for all of those. Um, and that's about it. And yes, you can advertise this second edition. Um, you can, I mean, that's kind of the point is that it's something new. So if you are advertising, you can say you're coming out with a new edition. Uh, yes, Cheryl, if you are interested in finding out how to copyright, you can Google. Um, I believe there was an article by Sandra Beckwith over at Build Book buzz that's build book buzz.com and I'm pretty sure that if you search her blog she's got a wonderful one up about copyright all right could you explain book funnel more what do they do how does it help us and why is this good book funnel is a secure way to share your book files PDF ebook and Moby we use them if we are sending out let's say we're reaching out to people that we'd like to endorse a book well, it can get pretty pricey to send out paperback copies to random people without any uh, contact first. So what we do is we usually reach out for an endorsement. We tell people that we love their opinion, um, we respect them and would like their opinion on a book and would they be willing to take a, a downloaded copy of the book or we'll offer them a paperback. What this allows is if they don't know anything about you and they're maybe a little interested, they can go to BookFunnel, securely download a copy of your book without being able to steal your files, and then they can read it. Maybe they come back and say, hey, I'd love a paperback, and you send one out. But either way, you're still saving a lot of money by not printing and sending a ton of paperbacks. Same things for people. If you're reaching out to people to review your book, you can offer them an ebook. If you are pitching yourself as an expert in the financial arena and you're pitching yourself for articles in a newspaper or a magazine, again, you can offer that ebook and they can easily download it safely. It's a very well known, protected, secure site. And then they can download it there and you're not sending out a bunch of money in books because I know some books I'm working with a cookbook right now and the hardcover is pretty pricey and then it's heavy. So then it, you have to mail it out. So we try not to mail out a bunch of extraneous copies. Now, if we need to mail one out, absolutely. If someone says I'll endorse your book, but I want a, a paperback or a hardcover copy, send it out. Um, well worth the money there, but we do try to be smart about it and with our budgets. Uh, Denise said she went and downloaded the best-selling author. Come on, everybody, follow suit. That's right, Denise, go get it. Uh, can't wait to hear what you thought about it. Thanks so much. All right. Um, is booklaunch.io a good place for book landing pages? I have to say I'm not familiar with that, Kate. Um, I'm sure going to go look it up now. And so if you do use it and you have great experiences, I'd love if you email and let me know. Uh, like I said, I haven't heard that one, but I'd love to hear your experiences. My email is Carrie, K-E-R-I, at newshelves, N-E-W-S-H-E-L-V-E-S dot -E -E com. And like I said, if you use it and you love it, I would love to hear your experience on it. We're always looking for new, um, you know, new formats to use and new products for sure. All right. Terry says, is a PDF file for my short story readable on a Nook or a Kindle, or do I need to make special formats for each? PDF is only available as a PDF. Um, it's available on computers. There's an app on iPhones, but it's only a PDF. People cannot use it in a Nook or a Kindle. For a Kindle, you must have a Mobi. That's an M-O-B-I file, and that is for Kindle only. Everywhere else, everywhere from a Nook to um, eBooks on your phone, everything uses an EPUB. 
So ideally, you would have a PDF, a Mobi, and an EPUB. There are conversion sites that you can do it, or we use someone, um, wonderful woman over in India. Her name is Sumi. Very, very affordable, and she goes by the size of the book. Um, so if you want information on Sumi's contact, Terry, please let me know. I know you have our email. So if you email us, I will make sure to get you two in contact and you can get pricing. Um, see if it's worth it for you. All right, going to go back to another email here. My book will be available in seven weeks. It's my first book. Congratulations. Um, I was wondering how I can make my book available in shelves. So Marie, you say in shelves, and I'm not sure if you mean like in bookstores and libraries, but generally you go through the same process. You take your file, you are going to upload to KDP. You upload to KDP for your print paperback to Amazon only. We don't want expanded distribution. You should have bought your own ISBN and that's what you use. Um, you would also ideally have ebook files, which would be a Mobi for KDP, and you upload the book there. That will get you up on Amazon for ebook and paperback. Then you take your book and you take your book files over to Ingram Spark. And at Ingram Spark, you have much the same process. You upload your paperback, you get it up for sale, and this will get you into Ingram Wholesaler. And Ingram is where most bookstores and libraries will purchase your book. You do have to make sure you discount it. Again, if you want bookstores and retailers to be able to purchase your book and make a profit, which is why they would sell your book, you have to set it at a 55% discount. That means the end retailer gets a 40% discount. Ingram Spark and Ingram take a, a cut and then you get your royalty. Um, then you have to let people know it's there. Do a press release. Let them know that the book is out. Um, reach out to libraries, bookstores, all of that. So step one is making sure your book is available on the proper platforms. And step two is marketing it. You have to go tell people that your book is there. Over one million books were published last year alone. One million that's a lot of books. If you don't tell people that your book is available, they won't know. And that goes for indie publishing or traditional publishing. That's why traditional publishers spend so much on marketing. I know that you've seen those cool graphics and billboards or signs in bookstores. That's not free, guys. They pay for that. They pay for being on the end cap. Um, there's a lot of marketing that goes on with traditional books and publishing that you go, oh, well, they, they just sold millions. Michelle Obama just, you know, sold millions of copies. Not true. There was a lot of marketing. There was a lot of, um, interviews and things that led up to it. A lot of people talking about it. So you have to market your book if you want people to buy your book. All uh, right. Are there forms or sites that allow us to get reviews? Um, there are certainly sites out there that um, help people with reviews. There are some that just have review lists. A really popular one is Hidden Gems, um, Gems as in G-E-M-S, and that is just a... Um, a very popular site that has book reader lists. And what they do is they do not guarantee reviews. What they do is they allow people to submit their email addresses and say which genres they like. And then when you sign up for Hidden Gems and their list is long, they're booking out into 2020 right now, um, they will take your book files and they offer it to the appropriate list. If people download the book, they're encouraged to review it, although they don't have to as a compliance with all review sites, um, but they're highly encouraged and many of them do because they like getting the free books. So you can do that. Um, there are other websites. I've heard of author circles where people get together with other authors and they all kind of get together and say, well, we'll swap books and I'll buy your book and review it and you buy my book and review it. And it's this weird tangle web. Don't do it. I beg of you, do not do that because Amazon has caught on. And when there's webs like that, they somehow with their, you know, their big brother knowledge and all of that, find out about it. And then not only do they strip the uh, reviews from the website, but oftentimes they can actually stop a book from selling on Amazon. Amazon's a big platform. We don't want to make them mad. The best way to get reviews is when people read it, encourage them to go review a book. I always say the kindest, best, cheapest support you can give an author is to review a book. If you read it and liked it, let people know. It's 
doesn't take long. I think an Amazon review has to be like 20 words. Most anyone can type out 20 words and say if they liked a book or not. So that's my two cents on reviews. All right. And one more email here. Okay. So the distribution options that you discussed, can these be applied to books that have already been published by a traditional small press or new books also with a traditional small press? I have both and was wondering. Thanks, Heather. Hi, Heather. The answer is yes. As far as publishing your book and getting it out there, many small publishers will use print on demand. Now, if they can afford it, if it's available, they will also do a print run and then they will pay a distributor and then they get it into Ingram and Baker and Taylor and all of those. But depending on your publisher, they may be using a print on demand model. And if that's true, the same process applies. Only you cannot put your books into these distribution um, places like Ingram and Ingram Spark and KDP, your publisher must do it. So certainly all of these things can apply if your publisher is willing. It really depends. We've worked with publishers who know all about KDP and Ingram Spark and using both of them. Um, some again use print on demand, some of them don't. Um, some of them aren't as knowledgeable. I mean, I'm sad to say that sometimes people will publish a book without much experience on actual distribution. Maybe they're great at getting those books out. Maybe they're great at creation of the book and formatting, but they don't know as much about distribution. So sometimes it does take a nudge from the author. But all of the principles that we teach for book distribution, while it's geared towards indie and self-published authors, it can be used by anyone. Um, we also work with some people who are um, small publishing houses, and we help them get their books out. And then there are some authors that we work with that are huge authors by traditional publishers, and we help them market because, as I said before, you might be surprised how many times a traditional published author still has to do their own marketing. A publisher does some, but you still have to build your platform and you still have to get your book out there. All right, guys, I've got about two more minutes. Um, thank you. Robbie over on Facebook is saying he loves the idea of a book as a business card. If you are a business person, the best business card is a book. Not only does it have your information on there, but it spells out your expertise. It says, I am a professional and I know what I'm talking about. I wrote a book about it. So it's absolutely one of the best things. And Maybe someone wouldn't keep your business card, but I'm willing to bet that if you give them a book, they're not going to just throw it in the trash. They're at least going to take a look at it. So a book as a business card is so smart, and it's why so many successful business people are writing books. It's not because they're making tons of royalties. It's because they are branding themselves. They are furthering themselves. I have a client that said, if I get my book out there and I get one client this year because of my book, I will make more than the royalties on my, my entire book for the life of the book. So sometimes a book acts not just as a book and not just a way to build money from a book, but as a business card, as a platform building um, accessory, one might say. All right, last minute questions. If you've got anything for me in Zoom, I would love to hear it. We've got about two more minutes. Um, and... All right, I think we're good. It's been about an hour. Of course, if you have any questions at all you'd like for us to answer on Free Advice Friday, if you're not available on Friday mornings or Friday mornings Eastern time, you can still email us and we try to answer your questions on Free Advice Friday. That email is info, I-N-F-O, at newshelves.com. We do look at those every single day and then we hold them off till Friday where we answer all of the questions. So make sure that if you have any type of questions, you email them in. If you can't join us, we try to get you the link for playback. And it's really just fun to have all these questions from different authors. I love that we have such a diverse group of people from self-published and traditionally published and um, new writers and veteran authors. It's super fun. Thank you for joining me. My name is Carrie Barnum. I'm the director for New Shelves Books, and I hope you have an awesome weekend. Bye, guys.